Uh, let's talk about whether Sunderland should appoint Roy Keane. Um, who shall I throw this one to first? Uh, Micah, why don't what, you go first? What on are you going to ask me? Why? Why, why well, the should? What I just said. Why should, the should? should? Should they? I mean, why not? And you know, take all the banter aside. You know, I'm a. We're all big fans of Roy. You're you're a Man United fan, even though you pretend you're not a Man United fan, Mark Chapman. <laughs> And everyone loves <laughs> Roy. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. What? I don't <laughs> pretend I'm you're pre- not. You're a Man United fan when it suits you. That, that, that's oh that's how you are. Oh, my God. God. This, is, <laughs> this is turning that into is one so of the worst bad. Monday Night Clubs I've ever done. <laughs> but Roy Keane, I, I think Roy Keane is a lot more intelligent and tactically aware than people give him credit for. Yeah, he's got the passion. Yeah, he's got the presence, all, all that thing. But... He, he, know, he knows the game and he's managed in the Premier League before. So managing in League One, the team that's probably got the one of the best uh, squads in the league, to take them forward into the, to the championship, it would be, for me, a, a great fit as long as everything's stepped up for, for both parties. I think the whole thing with, with Roy, oh, he's just going to be, you know, arguing with people... Roy's got an absolute, like, soft side to him where he's one of the nicest people. You can speak to him about anything. He's considerate. He watches football like anyone else. He absolutely loves football. And when people are talking about Roy and the manager, it's all, he'll be too hard on the players. That Yeah, if you're not doing your job right, he'll be hard on you. But he, he's a winner and he wants to win and he likes people who do things, you know, 100% correct or who give 100%, should I say, and, and that's it. So if it's the, the right fit, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't. Do I know, does he know enough players at that level? Maybe not, may, maybe not. But in terms of his credentials and what he could give as a manager, regardless if he's been out the game for 10 years, sometimes being out the game for that long actually helps you because you learn, you learn different things, you, you adapt, and then you go back in with more hunger. So... Why not for me? Why not? Uh, you, you know, last year, um, Michael, I did actually, I did a, an article that was talking to players that had played under Roy Keane as a manager. Mm-hmm. Um, so not not sort of that had played with him as a captain, actually played with him at Sunderland and also at Ipswich. And, you know, there was, as you would be expect, you know, there were stories of Roy Keane being volatile and explosive and... You know, there was a very funny story, which I think he tells tells in his book as well, about taking Ipswich players to some sort of like RAF training camp for pre-season where the players were woken up by stun grenades at five, at five <laughs> o'clock in the morning and they had to, they had to hand their phones in um, before going on the trip and just give the chief executive a sort of an emergency phone number if anything was to go wrong and, <laughs> and, and that was it. But, but... You know, that's that stuff aside. That's quite a big thing to say. Um, <laughs> but, but, but the stun grenades aside, stun, stun grenades aside, um, <laughs> stun grenades aside. What what really struck me were the stories, as you say, of him actually being more considerate. So, you know, I, his um, his captain at Ipswich, David Norris tell me a story about David Norris had scored the winner for Ipswich in a game and he comes into the dressing room after the match and Roy Keane's there saying that's my captain my captain has won that game for us putting his arm around him and David Norris was just saying you know for for a younger generation who either had grown up watching Roy Keane or have heard about Roy Keane which is probably what players playing now now at the stage that that you know a compliment from Roy Keane probably means a lot more than a compliment from most people when he actually yeah. gives it to you. And, and there are other stories as well about, you know, another player was saying they were out for dinner with their family. Roy Keane happened to be in the same restaurant. He took care of the bill. There was a lot of stuff like that. And players who were saying, you know, I felt like I could go and talk to him about anything that was going on in my life. Equally, there were other players who said, I didn't feel comfortable and that I felt his man management was too abrasive and it was all a bit explosive um, yeah, but you know, I think managers Stephen have that. Cole. It depends on. Sorry to cut you off. Depends who you ask. Mancini, Absolutely. Mancini, like at Manchester City, I won't say half of the dressing room hated him. Half of the dressing room didn't agree with how he saw football. 
But that doesn't mean he's not a good manager. And that's what people like. Every time there's a Roy Keane story, everyone loves to jump on it and make it like 10 times bigger than it actually is. And like, yeah, if you ask me about a couple of the people I've worked with, you know, I'm not Remy Gard's biggest fan, if I'm being totally honest. I still have respect for him, but do I think he was great? No, 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 I don't. I still have respect as a manager. But, and if you ask me about Mark Hughes, Mark Hughes was a really good guy, but he, he didn't get the best out of me. But Mancini did and Stuart Pearce did as well. So it all depends who you ask, doesn't it? It, it does. And I'll just finish, just finish what I was saying. St- Stephen Coldwell was his, I think he was his captain at Sunderland. And I mean, he found out he was going to Burnley when he was in Asda doing some shopping and Roy called him and said, you know, we've, we've accepted a bid for you. <laughs> so, so it really, it really does depend who you... <laughs> he was doing some shopping in Asda, um, as you do. And <laughs> but it, it is it's who you speak to. And what struck me is I, I just think Roy Keane is like almost defined he's so human for better, for worse, mm. for, for positive traits, negative traits. There's times I listen to him and think, you know, when he's doing his punditry now, there's times I listen to him and think, God, I'd love to, you know, spend some time working around you to, because someone who's working at, you know, with that intensity and that drive, there's other times where I'm like, oh, he must be a nightmare. Uh, and, and I imagine that there, there will be a bit of that, of, of both sides of that. But when you look at a club that needs an injection of drive, a personality of unity, particularly over a short term period, perhaps for the rest of the season, I, I think Sunderland could do worse. Where it could be a really interesting dynamic is the owner is young at mm. Sunderland. I think he's like 20, 24, 25 Dreyfus. Um, so Roy Keane being answerable to a 24-year-old owner um, is also a fascinating dynamic. So let's see how it plays out. Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, I'm with Micah on this. Roy Keane has high standards and, you know, and you would get, you know, mixed views of... As a manager um, should. As a man- yeah, well, as, 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 as most people should, actually. A- absolutely. And, and do you know what? I think, uh, if, I think that... You know, he gets a lot of criticism for for uh, the job which he did at Ipswich. But if you look at Ipswich's history over the last however many years, it's been a really tough job. I don't think that Roy should be judged on that. He did, did well at um, at Sunderland um, before. Now, mm-hmm. if if he wants the job and he goes and interviews, then I think Sunderland would you know have a good chance of coming up. I'm just amazed about the Sunderland thought process. Sacking Lee Johnson when they're they're third in the league. Okay, I know they got absolutely walloped by by Bolton and performances hadn't been very good. But where was the plan from Sunderland? Normally, a football club would sack a manager and you know, bearing in mind they're third in the league and want to get out of League One. Why didn't they have a replacement already there? We we all know what goes on in football and, and clubs tap managers up or speak to them through whatever. They've now lost at the weekend to Doncaster Rovers, who are bottom of the table. They've played more games, I think, than uh, far more games than the, than, the, than the top two in the division, and they're they're in a mess really at this stage. I just I just don't understand the thought process. It, it just seems like it was a panic decision off the back of a six nil defeat, and there was no there was no process in place to appoint somebody else. I thought that was what football clubs actually did. They had people working in the background to say, well. In the in the worst um, in the worst scenario, and we lose our manager or we sack our manager, we've got a list here. We, we, you know, we're going to go for X, Y, Z. But there's nothing there. They're going through a managerial, um, you know, process now, and these couple of weeks could be absolutely crucial. So whatever's going on at Sunderland, who knows? What well, one of the interesting things in all of this, I suppose, is is how players. Uh, and people in general, I suppose, react to the persona of Roy Keane because yeah. Roy Keane can only can only manage himself, really. And there will be, Micah, as you are well aware, you know, there will be people who, who will shrink in the presence of Roy Keane, maybe through no fault of his own, but because they have an idea of him that that is simply a caricature. Yeah, but that, that only lasts so long. It's like when I first met Patrick Vieira and I played alongside him. I was in awe. I was starstruck. You know, it's Patrick Vieira, what what a player, legend. After about a week or two weeks, it, you know, it, it wears off a little bit and you go to work. You still respect him. You still want to give 100%. But this whole thing of, you know, Roy, he's, you know, he's always angry. And honestly, they've got the wrong perception. Yes, on, on TV, if 
you know, if Man United were winning, you know, if he was doing Punnuchi 10 years ago and Man United were winning every week, you wouldn't probably see that side to him. But because United at the moment are going through a difficult spell, you're seeing the worst side of, 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 of Roy on TV and that's all it is. But that's only 5% of what he is. He's an absolute yeah. diamond of a bloke.